What's up you guys? Godzilla Fan Freaks coming at you today with another figure review. And today we are going to be taking a look at the Masters of the Universe Masterverse 87 movie Skeletor. This is the uh, second figure in the Masterverse lineup of their attempt at the 87 uh, figures. And again, I hope that they keep it going. Again, you guys already saw He-Man that I did just uh, the review before this one. And now we're going to be looking at Skeletor, which personally uh, is my favorite Skeletor of all time. So this was a no-brainer pickup for me. Uh, had to find this guy. Had to get him. And uh, because I just love Frank Langella's representation of uh, the 87 movie Skeletor. The way he delivered the lines, the, the costume and makeup work. I... I gush over that Skeletor so much, and this just gives me another opportunity to continue to gush over it. So, just looks great, fantastic. Let me just scoot him a little out of the way here so we could take a look at the box like we did with He-Man. Here is the deluxe style box. Again, I feel like these guys uh, would have still been done justice if they came in just the normal Masterverse boxes. I feel just sticking them in a uh, deluxe box was a little bit more just to get a little uh, bit more of a premium price for these. Um, but still, at 30, at around 30 bucks, uh, you're not going to be disappointed if you love the 87 movie. Again, just taking a look at this artwork, uh, you know, I'm just going to find a way to display these in uh, my kaiju room. And uh, I mean, it, I just love it. It just looks amazing. Like, I just want a giant blown up uh framed painting of that right there <laughs> i would love that or give me a giant uh cutout skeletor that i can put off into the corner of my collection room of this i would i would kill for that i would absolutely love it back of the box here again you guys saw it in the last review so i'm not going to do it again um, but you can kind of fuse He-Man and Skeletor's boxes together to get more of that climatic final battle. Um, everything all comes together here in as one piece. So again, if you're on the lookout for these guys, find a box that is in uh, good condition because again, you know, quality control and everything like that. I know me and uh, Nick Adams from the Monster Report have talked about it that uh, sometimes these boxes can be a pain to find in decent condition. You'll get dents, you'll get tears, um, you know, bends in the cardboard. Um, I don't know what they're doing in, uh, in shipping or, you know, getting these guys out of the factory, but man, they're putting these boxes underneath some uh, hardcore stress tests, uh, to, to, to say the least. <laughs> but, um, Again, if you're a fan of the 87 movie, I recommend picking up the He-Man. I recommend picking up the Skeletor. You are not going to be disappointed. Again, find some boxes that are in some decent conditions and, you know, display them nicely. Like, I know Nick's going to have this on display, the He-Man and Skeletor battle. I'm going to have it on display. I already kind of have an idea of what I'm going to do, where I'm going to be putting them. So, without further ado, that is the box all that good stuff out of the way let's bring in Skeletor himself and he does come with an accessory well he came with a few accessories but let's just take a look now at Skeletor uh, not going to be blabbering on as much as I did with the He-Man review before we get into the figure Skeletor here all I got to say is I love it it looks awesome there is no problems with this figure uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think it looks great. Of course, going straight on into it with paint applications. Paint apps, you know, they may not be 100% accurate to the film, but I think it works. For these upper armor pieces, a little bit of the cape, or the hood, and then the cape going down, you're kind of having like a reddish, uh, purplish brown color. Uh, lots of purples up here in the armor for sure. Uh, even though that may not be accurate to the film, I like the way it looks. I'm a fan of purple. I'm not complaining. Skeletor's got some taste. Okay, that's all I gotta say. Um, you know, face sculpt, very nice. Not 
like clean white, but a very dirty white. But I think it just brings out all the detail in the face very, very, very well. For his main part of his body, you get a very nice black, but I want to say, do you guys see that? He almost has like glitter worked into the mold. That's not a shine from the plastic, you guys. If you ever see this figure or get it in person, put it underneath the right type of light. Guys, that's glitter worked into the mold gives him that cosmic uh, feel, and I love that so much. It's even down here on his abdomen area a little bit. It even got worked into his robes. Again, you're just getting a little bit of like glitter worked into that mold, and I just think it works. It gives him that, again, that cosmic feel. Just looks great. Again, you got like silver and purple mixed together going down his little, uh, you know, robe uh, drapes here, which again, I love the design of this Skeletor. Very awesome. On his arm gauntlets here, you get like the little red, you know, technology lights and silvers and blacks. Just looks very, very good all the way around both of them look fantastic again all the detail in the armor pieces look fantastic all i can say is you guys not all mattel figures are created equal so if you do go out to your targets and you hunt for these guys and if they have multiples in stock guys i know that you know toy collectors and stuff usually do this but look at them individually really try to take a gander at them because you might find one that maybe has better face paint or maybe this one has a smudge or you know maybe this one I don't like the way you know maybe there's some paint smudges or something you know find ones that speak to you that look good because again quality controls are issues you know that is not unheard of Havoc staff very dull dark silver and then just black for the main staff sword very nice silvers, again, kind of like a silverish gray down here for the, the hilt and the handle, as well as black. He's got those silver painted fingertips that he had in the movie because he had like little like ring claws on the ends of his fingers. Again, you're getting all those skulls and everything. These are really kind of hard to focus on. Skulls and whatnot all worked into the mold everything down here on these robes the bugs cats skulls just look awesome again boots a very nice like pitted silver look i like the way that came out and then of course you got the skull there detailing here in the growing area Overall, just looks beautiful. Got this little gold piece medallion here for the back of the robe. Very nice. Detail-wise, again, guys, you could see it all there. We've kind of already been talking about it. It just looks great. I love all the detail in this guy. Again, that face. I, I have to agree with Nick and some others. It's a really a tough call because I love both of them and I have him over here for comparison. Uh, a little later on here in the video, but this face, again, I think Mattel nailed it. This is 100%, uh, you know, Frank Langella in the makeup and everything like that. It just looks amazing. It looks beautiful. It looks fantastic. You get the, the fangs in there because he had the little fangs. I mean, just take a moment and just look at that beautiful face. Oh, it looks wonderful. Hood, cape, all the wrinkles and everything look great. Again, cloth cape here. I like it. I think uh, this was the way to go. If they used a vinyl cape, which the Dark Despot uh, Skeletor from Classics has a vinyl cape, um, for that figure, it works. For this figure, 
cloth was definitely the way to go. Again, you get nice muscle tone detail in there, even though Frank Langella was not this jacked for the role of Skeletor. Still very, very nicely well done. Again, his sword, you get a skull in there with like bat dragon wings, little curl details up here. Havoc staff. Again, very movie design-esque. I want to say though, I might like the Havoc staff on the Dark Despot figure a little bit more. Um, I think it's a little more color accurate on that one too. Again, boots, robes, armor pieces, everything just looks great. Apologies for kind of fusing paint and then just going straight into detail without really announcing it, but that's kind of just sometimes what happens with figure reviews. <laughs> anyway, you guys, uh, moving on to articulation next. Articulation for this guy, again, you know, you're going to get a little bit of head movement. The uh, hood here, you know, it gets in the way because that is a vinyl piece and it's kind of pliable but also not really. Um, so you're only gonna get so much uh, head movement out of this guy. As far as arms go, which I can attest to mine, um, let me just point this out really quick. You guys see those white gloops underneath there? I guess that's just the glue that they use to adhere the, the shoulder pieces to the figure. Um, Nick had those on his as well. So that is a continuous issue. I don't think you're going to get around that. So um, don't worry about that too much. I guess in the end, at the end of the day, if you could get a really fine tip uh, black Sharpie up in there, you could probably go over that and uh, just get it a little bit of a darker color. So it's not so much of an eyesore at certain angles. But if you just have his arms down straight, you're not going to notice it kind of have them up at an angle you're gonna notice it a little bit as you can see but then arms of course rotate your shoulders forward and back very well not really hindered by a lot arms also bend out but again that's where the shoulder pieces get into a little bit of an issue you're only gonna get about that much of a outwards bend on them and then close them back down bicep swivel is present Double jointed elbows are there, but you might have to work that a little bit or heat that joint up. Wrists rotate and are on a hinge, so you can get rotation and hinge movement out of the wrists. Abdomen, a little bit more movement on this figure than the He-Man. You can get some side to side tilts as well as a nice ab crunch. And then, of course, you can turn that a little bit, but then it goes down into the waist joint. He does have a waist swivel, so you can you can get some nice range of movement out of this guy uh, versus the He-Man. Uh, that is for sure. Legs are going to be hindered by his robes and his cape down here, but you can get a nice, you know, kick, slight kick forward, backward, about the same. I didn't do the Eternia splits with He-Man, but you can kind of do the Eternia splits with Skeletor. He's really not that acrobatic. That actually looks kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. It looks cool the way he's like holding and hiding his face behind the Havoc staff. Hey. <laughs> you do get a thigh swivel as well, as you guys can see that cut in there so you do get a, a thigh swivel up in there double jointed knees my knees are just a little stiff but you can get a nice bend out of those knees again they are double jointed you might just have to work with it a little bit boot cut boot cut boot cuts a present ankles point them down point his feet up and you can get those pivots. So, good range of motion with this guy. Again, versus the He-Man, this guy's articulation is a lot better, a lot more movement, a lot more posability options with him. That is for sure. Uh, no complaints overall. 
uh, just very happy with this guy. Again, he's my favorite Skeletor. I had to get this figure. If I got this figure and not the He-Man, uh, I'm not going to lie, uh, I would have been just fine and happy. Now if I can just get him to stand again. I feel like he's going to fall back. <laughs> I'll have to mess with him a little bit. Now I've screwed up all his joints. That's my one issue with doing articulation segments with figures is it, sometimes it takes me a little while to work with them to get them back uh, to where I wanted them. Come on, Skeletor, stand. Stand! Maybe I have to talk to him like Frank Langella, but I don't want to kill your guys' ears, especially if you're using headphones, because Frank Langella was very, uh, you know... Just, just the way he portrayed the lines. Like, I'm trying to think of a line that I could say here on camera that would work. Um, you know. <laughs> the key! Get the key! <laughs> you know, speaking of the key, here's the cosmic key. <laughs> Find them wherever they are and bring them to me. I must possess all or I possess nothing. Find them my best impression <laughs> but here's the cosmic key very nice uh bright vibrant silvers a very nice bright vibrant purple here at the top you get the red button there nice bronze goldish colors down here a nice brown here for the strap i wish that there was a way to like hook this onto a belt or something somewhere but there's not and then since we're on the topic of the key, just because I have it right here, here is the Dark Despot Skeletor Cosmic Key. See if I can get both of these to um, show up. As you can see, there are a lot of differences. The Classics Dark Despot one has a little bit more finer details. I like the color a little bit more. The button though is not a red, it's a black but there are the differences between the cosmic keys. And now, finally, for comparisons, let's bring in Dark Despot. Again, I have to thank Nick Adams from the Monster Report for this figure. This guy is still pretty much my pride and joy of my Masters of the Universe collection. Here he is paired up with the Dark Despot Skeletor. Here's what they look like side by side. And again, I must say, you can't go wrong with either. They look fantastic next to each other. Um, I'm glad in my lifetime, I actually have two representations of my favorite Skeletor of all time in figure form. Again, Dark Despot. Let's get a little bit better of a of the center here. I mean, I absolutely love both. They both have pros. They both have cons. Um, you can't go wrong with either. Again, you're going to, as of right now, you got 30 bucks, or you got about maybe 150 if you're lucky, but possibly 200 and up. <laughs> um, I remember Nick got me this guy for a pretty good steal. And, uh, but it was basically kind of, you know, gifted to me in a way. And I really appreciate that. Um, Nick, thank you so much. And I'm just ecstatic to have both of these guys in the collection. They both look great. Again, they both have pros. They both have cons. I'm just glad to have both. So without further ado, you guys, we are Godzilla Fan Freaks. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to Atomic Blast that notification bell while you are there. Don't forget to like and follow Godzilla Fan Freaks on Facebook, and then don't forget to follow Godzilla Fan Freaks on Instagram, as well as stay tuned to my weekly episodes of Kaiju Chill O'Clock that I do every week. Those live segments are a lot of fun. We have a great time. So like always, you guys, without further ado, we are Godzilla Fan Freaks. Hope you enjoyed this review, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.